Well, um, let's end up with a couple things that are honoring him. I'll give you an example. You know, this, this past week in Israel, we had a wonderful thing happen. You might not think it was wonderful at the first, but we have a big problem in Israel of human trafficking. And uh, a lot of the young people, I think Joel's been a little bit involved in that. My, one of my sons, uh, my second son Solomon, and some of the other people around him have really been concerned about that. They've been praying. Um, uh, my son Solomon was part of uh, getting a film, a video, against human trafficking. They sent it to all the, uh, all the Knesset members. And they've been praying about this and, and lobbying to try to find... And little by little, over the past two years, the attitude in Israel about human trafficking has been changing. They're starting to look, they're starting to, at least in the Knesset, they're starting to say that prostitution is bad. You know, like, really? I took a lot of... The, the, no, but, but the attitude before this was, hey, women are free, they're just having fun, making little money, you know. Give me a break. So this, though, in Israel there was a man who held the largest human trafficking ring in Israel. He had 300 women. He mostly had gathered them from Eastern Europe, promised them that they would get jobs as waitresses, brought them to Moscow, flew them from Moscow to Cairo in Egypt, and then hired Bedouins to basically uh, abduct them and bring them across the border into Israel, where then they would, they would be, had their identity papers taken away, sold for between five and $7,000, and then they were made to uh, commit immoral acts 20 times a day, seven days a week. They caught this man, and this week he was sentenced to 18 years in jail. Glory to God, hallelujah. I think it should have been 1,800 years in jail, but still... What a victory. What a victory. It's not that I want something bad to happen to him, but we want to, we want to crush that, that slavery that's going on. What a victory. That's something that gives glory to God that happened in, 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 in Israel, in our Knesset. Hallelujah. Thank by our police. And it was influenced by some of the believers there. See, good things can happen. We need to believe that we can do something that will give glory to God. You know, today there's all this talk about homosexuality. I, I, don't, I don't really understand that. You know, um, and part of the problem I think we make as believers, we respond to homosexuality just with theology. You know, okay, well, God says that, and well, that's true for us. But if you're talking to somebody that doesn't believe in God, that doesn't help him. But we say, but we have to say, listen, do you, do you believe in, in logic? Do you believe in health? Do you believe in something being natural? I mean, look at that. Is that logical? Is that natural? Is that healthy? Is that moral? I mean, for, let's not say you don't believe in God, but look, look at the human anatomy. Is that right? Is that the right thing to do? It's not natural. It's not logical. It's not moral. We need to be able to face those things. Now, I'm also thinking what a nice thing that's happening here in this congregation I'm very pleased with, think about that. We have two congregations sharing this building together. One of them that has a mission's vision for, for Israelis, and one of them has a mission's vision for Palestinians. Isn't that nice? And we're in the same, sharing the same building together, and not that we don't have arguments, but uh, we still love one another. Amen. Isn't that right, Jonathan? <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we believe that, and we have the same thing in Israel. You know, in Israel, we have Palestinian believers and we have Israeli believers. And we love one another. We argue rough about there's some topics that it's very hard for us to agree upon. But we love one another. We're one body. And that's something that gives glory to God. And sometimes in the middle of an argument, you, we have to stop and say, wait a minute. What's going to give glory to God in this? Not just, am I right and are they wrong? But what's going to give glory to God in this situation? Do you see the difference in attitude? I remember, I tell the story, but this was a, one of the first meetings we had on, uh, in, uh, in Arab-Jewish reconciliation back in Israel. This was like maybe 18 years ago. And we had a meeting. It was at the, the YMCA in, uh, in downtown Jerusalem. And we met there, and there was a lot of tension this was after one of the intifadas, and there was a lot of tension between Arabs and Jews. And we got, and most of the time we have these joint meetings, they go pretty well. But this particular meeting, it wasn't going well at all. It started to get tense. We had the Jewish pastors and the Arab pastors, and it started to get very tense. And it, it, I, we thought, oh, my, this could end up in a disaster. You know? 
We're getting, it's getting really, it's getting right up the height of it. And it was my turn to speak. So I got up to the, and I'm praying, you know, Lord, what are we going to do? You know, and, uh, you know, and I'm irritated. I mean, I know of all God's prophecies about, about restoring the land and restoring our people. And it's so, it's so irritating what they, were, what they were claiming, you know. And I got up there and I stuck my finger. I said, now you listen to me, you Arab believers. I said, I want to tell you something. And I'm telling you, I thought people were going to pull out knives. This was about the end, you know. And I said, I want to tell you something. We Jewish believers, we have been arrogant and we have been prideful and we have not reached out our hands to you in love. And I want to say to you on behalf of the Messianic Jewish body in Israel, we want to repent before you and ask forgiveness for that. And I got down on my knees and the Holy Spirit hit that place. People began to repent and forgive one another. Now they're still wrong, but that's all right. No, anyway. <laughs> but what I'm saying, that, now, you hear what I'm saying? That's not the point. The point is, what will give glory to God in a certain situation? Is that what we're asking? We're so concerned about our being right all the time that we miss, that we miss the opportunity to do something that's going to give glory to Him. Well, I'm excited. I believe that the whole, um, the fact that we have a messianic remnant in Israel today, I think that's giving glory to God. Just the fact that we're there, despite, I mean, the Messianic remnant in Israel, what a mess. I mean, we're small, we're weak, we've got problems, but the fact that we're there is, is still giving glory to God, and we're excited about it. I remember, literally, you remember also 25, 25, six years ago when we started studying together about uh, apostolic teams and apostolic ministry and apostolic authority. And I think about this now, that not only is there, is there uh, a messianic remnant in Israel, but it's beginning to rise up among the body in Israel, apostles and prophets. God is beginning to restore apostolic and prophetic ministry, five-fold ministry within the messianic remnant in Israel. It's so exciting. And, and I think that, that when that this, there's a form of spiritual government within the body of Messiah. Now listen closely. There's a spiritual government within the body of Messiah that has to precede the second coming that will be his government in the world. We have spiritual government in the body now, which will then become his outward governing authority in the nations when he comes back. And the fact that the, that we, that the, the original apostolic community is just beginning to be reformed in Israel and there's going to be, and there is, uh, the, he's reestablishing uh, apostolic authority in the body in Israel means we are getting so close just to be ready for the second coming of Yeshua. It's got to do with his government upon the earth. The spiritual government is first within the body before Yeshua comes back so that his governing authority can be, his kingdom authority can be established in the world after he comes back. I'm going to say that one more time. I didn't say it very well. His, Yeshua's spiritual government must be established in the body of believers before he comes back so that his kingdom government can be established in the nations after he comes back. And the fact that God is, is starting to reestablish apostolic ministry and apostolic spiritual authority and government back in Israel today means we're, we're getting this close to his kingdom. That's exciting. That's something that's going to give glory to him. I remember a couple of our friends. I wasn't there. Dan Jester was among them and a few others got in a brief audience with the Pope. And he said to him, this is right, this is while he was a cardinal. And he met them and he said, he said, wait, you're, you're Messianic Jews? And they began to explain to him, yeah, there's Messianic Jews around the world, there's Messianic Jews in Israel. And he said, he said, if you are who you say you are, we must be a lot closer to the second coming of Jesus than I thought we were. That's the Pope saying that. Not bad, huh? For the Pope, anyway. <laughs> and it says, I'm, I'm almost done. It, just one more little point here. And it says, it says in Ephesians 1, 
that Yeshua is over all powers and principalities. And how does he rule over all things? But God has made him head of the church, head of the ecclesia, head of his body, which is his governing body over everything else that's in the world. So very simple, Yeshua, the body of believers, the rest of the, rest of the nations. He reigns through that. So within the body, as we begin to establish right government, righteousness, integrity, right order in the kingdom of God, we are beginning to establish his kingdom within the body of believers so that it can be brought out into the kingdom of God, into all the nations of the world. And it says in Ephesians 3, last point, is that after he prays this great prayer, first of all, he talks about the one new man, the mystery of the partnership between Jew and Gentile, Israel and the church. And then he prays that we would be strengthened in the inner man. And he, come, he finishes all that and he says, so that there might be glory to God in Jesus and in the church and in the ecclesia and in the kihila and in the body of believers. Yeshua gave God glory, but we are also supposed to be giving God glory. There's two things that give God glory. Well, actually, there's another thing. It says in Psalm 19 that the heavens give glory to God. So they, the, the rest of creation also gives glory to God. So maybe there's three things. There's all of creation, there's Yeshua, but there's also us as a group of people. And as we give ourselves to this to this body, to this group of people, the international ecclesia, the body of Messiah, the church, this group of people, as we become one, as we begin to love one another and walk in purity, this reflects well on him. It gives him glory. So when we think about what goes on in our congregations and between leaders, are we, doing, are we thinking about what's going to give him a glory? What's going to be honoring to him? And that's what we need to think about what's happening in the body. You know, in Israel today, we have um, all the pastors of the congregation. We formed a, an, email, uh, net, uh, an email network, a closed network, just of the pastors, so that we can, we can correspond with one another of all different streams. Charismatic, anti-charismatic, pro-Jewish expression, anti-Jewish expression. We're all there. Now, so far, our correspondence for the last 10 years hasn't been all that glorifying to God, I don't think. But the fact that we've got this network there, we keep praying and believing that as we continue to communicate with one another, that there will be, out of the communication, will arise unity and will arise uh, uh, glory to Jesus through this. And we're going to break the curse that says, two Jewish people, three arguments. Amen. Well, that's all. Listen, let's have a little prayer. Why don't you stand up for a second?